phases. As Paul says in Romans 12, that as we present ourselves as a living sacrifice before God, which is our reasonable act of worship in response to His grace, that we need to determine not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed in the renewing of our minds so that we may be able to discern what? What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Paul is saying here our whole life is about learning how to do the will of God at ever greater levels of perfection and obedience so that Jesus is formed in us so that through our life of believing and following, we image the Lord Jesus Christ to a watching world in an unmistakable, compelling, even irresistible way. Now the great advantage we have in this is that we can do it by the power of the Spirit and we can do it by the power of the Spirit today in ways that was unthinkable before Jesus came. See, people have always been made right with God by grace through faith from the very beginning. But under the old covenant, the way believers' lives were governed by God, the way they matured, the way they grew as the people of God was under the tutelage of the law. God dealt with his people as if they were little children. And so he gave them minimums and maximums and all these rules and regulations like you would govern a small child. But since Jesus came and his death on the cross, we have now been brought into a whole new covenant with God. We're not saved in any different way. We're not made right with God, I should say, in any different way. It's always been by grace through faith in what God provides. But now as believers, our life of maturity the transformation process, how God governs us as his people is completely different. It's a new and living way. It's not by stone tablets with the law of God chiseled on them and we are called then to internalize those laws in our heart. God says, I will make a new covenant with my people. I will give them a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. I will make them especially responsive to me. I will give them a new nature, in other words. And I will place my spirit inside of them and I will write my will on their heart, on this new nature, and I will cause them by my spirit to walk in my ways. Wow! That is awesome. And that's the spirit-empowered life that Jesus exampled for us and what the New Testament epistles call us to. Because just like Jesus, who lived by the Spirit, he was conceived by the Spirit, he was anointed by the Spirit, he was affirmed by the Spirit, Then he was led by the Spirit, and he was empowered by the Spirit. So just as Jesus lived by the Spirit and then walked by the Spirit, so we're called to do the same. Paul says in Galatians 5, 25, if we live by the Spirit, then let us keep in step with the Spirit. You and I live by the Spirit. He's the one who came and convicted our hearts and convinced us of the need for Jesus. Paul says salvation is all about the Spirit setting you apart and you placing faith in the truth. You could not have believed if the Spirit had not prepared your heart to believe. It was the Spirit then who indwelt you and became a down payment of all of the riches that God has reserved for you in heaven to enjoy and in the new earth. They're called spiritual blessings. In other words, they're blessings in the realm of the Spirit. It's about the Spirit's provision for you. The Spirit regenerated you, created a new nature in you. The Spirit, Jesus used the Spirit to baptize you into the body of Christ. Spirit baptism is something that happens to you that you do not have anything to do with other than you believed in Jesus. At the point of faith in Christ, Jesus takes the Spirit and immerses you into his body and makes you a part of the church, the universal church of Christ. The Spirit gives you 24-7 access to the Father, Paul says. The Spirit intercedes for you 
You live by the Spirit. And now Paul says, if you live by the Spirit, then keep in step with the Spirit. He's there to illuminate your mind so that you understand the Word of God. He's there to strengthen your inner person so that you can understand the dimensions of Christ's love for you. You can pray in the Spirit. Ask God to to open your mind and to strengthen you and empower you based on who you are in Jesus Christ. How do I be filled with the Spirit? That's the command in Scripture. I'm never commanded to be baptized. That's how I live by the Spirit. But now I'm supposed to keep in step with the Spirit and the Bible says then I'm responsible to be filled with the Spirit on a daily basis. How do I be filled with the Spirit? Trust and obey. Trusting the Word of God. Allowing the Word of Christ to richly dwell within you. To trust the Father's Word like Jesus trusted the Father's Word against all odds and against all emotional experiences, against all appearances. Trust the heart of God. Trust His Word and then obey. And as you obey the revealed will of God, the Spirit of God will renew your mind. And then you'll be able to discern the will and the desires of God for your life that are not explicitly revealed in the Scripture. You'll be able to to follow the desires of your heart because you've delighted yourself in the Lord. 